Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be showing you how you can use the Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024 EFB to make your journeys in a large airliner a little bit simpler. In our previous video we showed you kind of how I use it for general aviation, and now we'll take a look at it for the big guys. Let's get started. So first things first, uh, we have ourselves a 787, and as you probably know from fiddling with any of these large aircraft, is it can be quite a process to go through and program all these different components. You know, I could sit in here, I could say we're in Boston, pop it in here like this, I go through the different components, and it takes a hot second to basically do all that work. But believe it or not, we don't have to go through all that trouble. Uh, one of the things we can do is we can actually bring up our EFB by pressing the tab key, or of course we can come float over here like this. So what I'm going to do is uh, set up a flight, I'm going to go ahead and reset, make sure everything is ready. Uh, from our last video, of course, you probably saw that we could go through and see all of our flight performance and stuff like that. I'm going to neglect that today. Now, the reason that I'm going to neglect it is on account of the fact that I don't really need it for that particular thing. You'll see what I mean in a moment. So what we're going to do is we're going to depart from Boston here. I don't know that's going to be our point of start. It's going to ask us for what runway we want to use. Um, I'm going to get a little more information first here. Uh, we're going to set ourselves up a departure here. I'm going to zoom out. We're basically heading down south, so it shouldn't be too hard. Uh, let's see, Blizzard, that's a kind of out west uh that one takes you down there that's not too bad celtic file that takes you over the ocean no, we don't want that uh, that one kind of takes you over there oh let's see l8 uh yeah, kind of liking that that's, that's not lapsta it's heading up north though i don't want to go north uh let's see logan and of course we can pick out exactly where we want to go celtic bruin is that fantastic that all these things have that name and again depending on what we're trying to do patriots oh there we go we're definitely taking the paths fantastic so what I'm going to do is I'm going to press Change Procedure. And what that will do is essentially select the procedure that we're interested in using. So now it's going to ask us to go ahead and find a route. But since we haven't defined our route, we have to go through and do it. So what I'll do now is come down to Arrival. I will assume we're going to BWI today. Keep it nice and interesting. Press that one. It's going to ask us for runway. Uh, we don't know yet. And let me show you a really quick tip, too, whenever you're working with this. If you go to this option here and press I, if you press Runways, it'll actually make our recommendations. For example, you'll see here it's recommending runway. 27. If I click that, I can see that's plenty big enough for our purposes. Obviously, air traffic control dictates this here, but knowing that that's right there, that makes me my life a lot easier. And that actually is based on the weather. So if I come back up here real quickly here, we can actually dial that in. Um, we're saying we're taking runway 27 because it's a little bit better there. Obviously, you got to be careful whenever you're doing any procedures here to make sure that they're compatible with the runway. Now, the cool thing here is if I come down to information again, let's go ahead and uh, cancel out Boston here. Let's go down to BWI, make it easy for us. Press the little X there, KBWI. Baltimore, Washington International Runways. It looks like they're landing 3-3 uh, left today. Uh, that's easy because we could just literally come in here and do 3-3 three, three left just like that and you can see everything starts to actually automatically calculate for you and it makes some great recommendations here now this looks good to me trish 4 i terp z3 is usually the one to go through via baines that looks good to me and of course we can sit here and change the procedure uh, for example let's say i want to do ils 33 it's recommending direct that sounds good to me i actually like jans it's a little easier press change procedure everything quickly dynamically updates itself and now the crazy thing is if i press my find root button it'll actually make a recommendation on how to get down there which is awesome so let's see here we have our procedure pats three runway two seven we got our waypoints we have our arrival we have our approach procedure oh my goodness this is all good to go uh, we'll probably do dca here as our backup in case something goes wrong keep in mind at any point you can always press this little i button to bring up more information so if i were to hit that real quick we could double check to see what the weather is going to be like i could say hey what's the weather like today what's the weather like tomorrow and you can see all that stuff will update itself just like that to make our life much much simpler for the purposes of our planning again isn't this nice that you just have it now, there's a couple things I want to do. The first thing I would recommend doing is saving it. Uh, if you don't save it, you could have some issues. But one of the things you'll notice is this button that says Send Route to Avionics. Now, you'll notice as soon as I press that button, if I were to come down here and look, you'll see there's a bunch of stuff going on, including this button that now illuminated saying, Are you sure you want to do this? So what I'm going to do to demonstrate how awesome this is, is I'm going to sit here and zoom this out a little bit. I can also uh, right-click, switch that to center mode. Ah, actually... You know, I kind of liked it better the way it was. But, of course, I pushed the button, so now I'm doomed forever. And you'll see there, there's my entire flight plan ready to go. When I'm ready, just press the exec button. Now, you'll see it just loaded up all those waypoints. Uh, do you have any idea how much work that it normally is? But let me give you a word of advice. You'll want to check to make sure that nothing's broken. So if I open this here, you'll see we have our different place for pats. And if I go to my next page, you'll notice there's a nasty discontinuity. I told you it wasn't perfect. Press execute. We'll go ahead through our pages. Hook through vectors. I'm going to get rid of vectors and switch that with Jans. Next, next, previous, 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 previous. Isn't that awesome? 
All of that stuff has been done for us, and our entire flight plan is now ready to rock. You can actually go to flight plan mode, and if I zoom in a little bit, you can actually see the entire thing is all preset out for us. Now, there's a couple of things we didn't change. One thing you'll notice, for example, is our cruise altitude was never set. And because of that, uh, that could give us some interesting little issues later on. So, for example, if I were to set this to 36,000 feet and then send that route to my avionics, uh, that's not going to change a lot of stuff. As a matter of fact, when I go to run it again, you'll see it's all broken. You know, we have to actually come down here. We have to set our individual stuff again to go ahead and correct any of the discontinuities. Like I said, we're going to go direct jans. We're not going to go vectors. Execute previous, 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 and that looks delightful. Now, the reason this is so darn useful here is I can also press File Flight Plan with Air Traffic Control. Like I said, I also highly recommend saving at this point. So that's recommended, definitely. Now, before I start pushing pressure buttons, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop over here, and you can actually set some new flight details. For example, it could be IFR, airline. I could come in here and set it to Delta, Lufthansa, or anything like that. You could set up your navigational and communications. Again, this is IFR stuff. The important thing to know here is that you can basically dial in all these. There's also this little builder that kind of helps you. So I could say I have standard equipment plus a GNSS. And obviously, it would depend completely on uh, what you have here. And again, you go through all those different components. That's perfectly fine for me. Our Mode S uh, flights uh, were technically scheduled today. And of course, if you wanted to, you could dial in remarks. This is fluff. Uh, it's not going to have a big impact on the flight at all. Now, if I come over here to zero fuel weight, this is where things get kind of interesting, and you got to be careful here. So passengers will see I'm um, taking 300. Uh, that's important. Cargo, uh, we could say 1,500 or something like that. And that'll basically settle those components. Now, one of the things you're probably going to observe is something doesn't look right here. It says our empty weight is this. Our block fuel is 171 pounds. See how it's a problem? So now if I come to the fuel page, this is where you're going to give yourself the ability to actually dial in some of these elements. And one of the things you'll observe is it does not calculate any of this correctly for this particular aircraft, which is uh, not frustrating, but it's just something you have to kind of be aware of. It thinks we're going to use 51 pounds of fuel, which is ridiculous. Uh, that is just not accurate whatsoever. So unfortunately for us is that we'd have to kind of come in here and basically adjust this. First of all, you're probably going to use 1,500 pounds for taxi. Like it's going to be drastically more in a contingency for are you kidding me? Like, again, you'd have to pre-calculate all this. And again, I could say extra fuel. I'm actually carrying 10,000 pounds or something along those lines. And that gives you sort of that option to basically go through it. Because right now, that is just not accurate. You would not be carrying 3,375 pounds. It'd be closer to 19,000 for this flight. So you just want to be a little mindful of that because it's not going to be accurate. All right, with that taken care of, one of the things I like to do now is to go back over here to my main page, flight performances, go to my mass and balance, and double check my fuel. Um, obviously, you don't need setter fuel for this. I'm actually going to cancel this out, ignore the fact everything got dark. Don't forget when you do do that, you hit load an aircraft just to confirm that everything does take. That's a 33,000 aside. Even that's too much fuel. Uh, we could probably go with, um, like I said, about 12,000 aside is probably going to be fine. 12,000 aside looks pretty good to me. I'm pressing load an aircraft. So it's 24,000 pounds. It's a little bit lighter. At least our fuel is now balanced. Another thing you're going to observe here is my cargo set. My seats, uh, look at this, isn't this so cool? Uh, one of the things you could do to make your life easier here, see this little button, is you can actually basically dial in the average mass, and all you can do is quick fill and adjust this left to right. Just make sure the masses align with each other, and you'll see what I mean in a minute. So with that all taken care of, uh, one of the last things we can do here is if you actually click environments, you can actually dial in details to be able to figure out what your performance would be like with this aircraft during certain takeoff situations. So for us, I believe we were taking runway 27, but you can actually come in here Hit that button and you can study things how your impact of options would change so for example if i come down to flaps index let's say i want to take uh, two clicks of flaps here one two you can see that gives me a little bit more room for landing for takeoff on the flip side uh, you can see here that uh, my ground roll is about 6100 feet uh, which is quite a bit so let's see here let's assume we're going to take off a uh, flaps four here give us a little bit more kick try to see if that's going to improve things a little bit but you can see it didn't have that much of a drastic impact on us so i'll go back to flaps three which is basically going to be the limit of our approach here and you can see we're actually in trouble here we're going to use a lot of runway here but that gives you an idea of what it's going to come out of when we put it in the fms itself so with this all taken care of again at any point you can file this with atc which is awesome because then we can press this button here we can go ahead and talk to clearance and we can go ahead and request our clearance just like that and now is that not awesome ifr to baltimore ready to copy well that's taken care of i'm going to get some other buttons taken care of Red 64 is clear to Baltimore Airport via the Papa Alpha Tango Sierra Sierra 7 departure expect runway 27 maintain FL tree 60 departure frequency is 1 tree tree 0 squawk 705 tree Is that awesome?
Everything we just did is all pre-programmed and ready to go. This is good. Tango Sierra Sierra 7 departure runway 27 maintain FL tree 60. I really like to do a takeoff bump. Is one tree tree. Zero squawk seven zero. He said flaps three, right? Six four. Ten degrees. Six four read back is correct. Contact ground on one two one. Nine or one ready to taxi. Good day. Whoops. I always do that by accident. Twenty two uh, runway position. Look at that. Look at that. Check it out. One, two, three. There's all of our numbers all ready to go. Take off gross weight. It's going to scream at us for this one. Uh, we don't know what the gross weight is because we haven't checked that. So what we do now, of course, is we want to actually we did read it back. But you can see every single detail we popped in there is already sitting there waiting for us. Isn't that awesome? You want to hit the ex uh, execute button every once in a while, too, just to make sure that's good. Pre-flight complete. Isn't that insanely impressive, just how well that works as for that particular purpose there? And you can see our 7053 is already pretty much reloaded and ready to go. And now we're just ready to go. I can go to my legs. They all check out. I can go to my fix page. I can go to my prog page. Let's be honest. Progressive rock is the correct kind of music. Uh, come on. <laughs> we can go into here and come up here. We can dial in our 36,000 feet. Everything is ready to go for us. And instead of having to sit there and dial in every single one of those details, just like that, we're now ready to rock. Now, one last thing we'll take a look at here, and I'm going to go ahead and press the tab key real fast here, just as a word of advice and warning here, is uh, one of the things you notice is when I press my info page and I went up to my runways page and actually took a look at this, I'm going to go to my charts real quick. Go to my airport diagram and open this sucker up. And uh, one of the things you're going to notice here is this is the wrong airports. <laughs> We're just supposed to be in Boston. Oh, boy. That's what I get for clicking things too fast. All right. Back to what I was saying. So if I open this up and actually open up the diagram, one of the things you'll observe is the fact that we have a little diagram of where our aircraft is at this airport. Now, you're sitting here going, oh, that is so darn cool. Check that out. We know exactly where we are. Let me just show you something real quick. Now, if you look out real quickly here, this little dot says that we're over here where my mouse is, and it's actually not properly lined up. Now, the reason I point this out, and let me show you why, is if we were to switch to a departure real quickly here, uh, actually, we can do this real simply because we can actually go to the departure that we picked here. Uh, we said, uh, what do we say here? Uh, scrolling up here, uh, procedure pats three, pats three, pats three, pats three. Uh, let's see here, departures, pats three, and again, uh, we have them all laid out for us. Uh, pats three, pats seven, my apologies. We open this sucker up, which you'll observe is we are nowhere on this chart. So for those of you who are big fans of things like, you know, the iPads, with the four flights and stuff like that, you're not going to get that level of accuracy that you want. However, if you do click on this button here and you zoom in hard enough, uh, you'll find that this actually kind of works. If you get lost, by the way, you can press recenter. Zoom in, zoom in, zoom in. You actually notice that you can basically see the stuff on the ground. So it makes it much, much simpler for the purposes of being able to kind of tell where you are, like when you're taxiing around, if you do use that zooming feature like that. And again, you can open up your map settings in the event that you needed to. And I think it's kind of neat that you can like turn on like your default and your satellite view and everything like that. You can even turn on radar maps. And again, they did such a nice job on this. And again, if you needed to change your orientation, you could. I'm a big fan of obviously track up or heading up versus north up, except when I'm dealing with procedures. I just find it much easier visually for me to be able to see north up when I work with procedures. Now that that is all done, this aircraft is ready to rock. Something that would normally take us a half an hour just took us a few minutes. And that gives you an idea of just how incredible that system is that they put in here. And I know they're adding more details and basically going to make it simpler and simpler with time. But just like that, I go ahead and pop a couple switches. And next thing you know, this entire aircraft, again, we can put that on auto. It should be on off because of the fact that we need that. We can start this aircraft up. We can go ahead and call ground and let them know we're getting ready for our departure. Everything is just ready to rock just like that. Enjoy.